Good evening. It's so good to see you tonight. Welcome to Southeast at our house. Bienvenidos. Buenas noches. Um, bienvenidos a, a nuestro hogar, a Southeast and nuestro hogar. <clears throat> we are so happy that you can that you could join us tonight. And uh, before we go any further, I'd like to just to remind you to keep um, keep everyone in prayer. Those that those that are still are ill, um, pray for them. Those that are suffering from uh, from the virus or any other sickness and disease, let's just continue to pray for them. Continue to pray for Pastor Hyman, uh, for Brother and Sister Collins that are recouping from uh, from um, from the, uh, sinus infections. Uh, from for Sister Dolores, for Brother Max, and pray for also for the De Oyos, Rodriguez, and the Hobbs family in the loss of their loved ones. I know that there's been a lot of lo loss lately due to this pandemic. And, uh, you know, it, it just hurts our heart to, to see so many loss of life. And we just call on the Holy Spirit to bring comfort and peace to uh, to those hurting families. So um, we just ask that you keep them in prayer. Vamos, pidemos oración por por uh, todos que, que están do, uh, doliendo en esta, en esta noche, en esta tarde, los que están enfermos, los que tienen necesidad, específicamente por el pastor Jaime, por los hermanos Collins que han estado enfermos también de, de Sinus, por Sister Dolores, por Brother Max, por la familia de Hoyos, Rodríguez y Hobbs en la pérdida de su, de su ser querido, que el Señor traiga uh, consuelo a sus, a sus almas, a sus corazones. Um, <coughs> so, just remember to pray for all of those that are that are still um, uh, that are still uh, at home. That the Lord continue to minister to them wherever it is that they might be. That's where the Lord is as well. So, if you would open up your Bibles with me to Psalms 33, abren sus Biblias conmigo en Salmos 33. We're going to uh, look at the first nine verses and then go on to verses 20 to 22, and it says. Sing, sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Then starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea unto, into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. And then verse 20 says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice. For we trust in his holy name. May our unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Y los, los últimos uh, versículos 20 y 22, quiero uh, una vez más repetirlos en, en español. Dice, esperamos confiados en el Señor. Él es nuestro socorro y nuestro escudo. En Él se regocija nuestro corazón, porque confiamos en su santo nombre. Que tu, que tu gran amor, Señor, nos acompañe tal como lo esperamos de ti. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, my Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. My Lord, how words cannot even express, my Lord, the joy and the, and the love that we have for you, my Lord. Sometimes words just fail us, my Lord. And sometimes our minds cannot even con comprehend your greatness. But I pray that you accept this this uh this expression of our love and our and our worship unto you my lord just accept this this worship father we pray in jesus precious name we pray also for those that are sick and those that are hurting my lord may your holy spirit minister to them in your precious son jesus name we pray amen amen join us with you uh would you in in a, in a few songs of praise <clears throat>
do is we lift Jesus higher always for for he is our he is our refuge and he is our salvation and we just thank the Lord um, and well as you can see pastor is not here so um, so I'd like to talk to you a, a few a few minutes about um, what it is to live daily in Christ and uh, so my um, my scriptures are found in in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 uh, but before before we go any further I'd like to to pray and ask the Lord to help me because I need help <laughs> so let's pray dear Heavenly Father once again my Lord I just come to you just thanking you father for the opportunity to bless your name the opportunity my Lord to to share the word your word your heart your love your grace your mercy to my brothers and sisters in in you father I pray that you help me Lord anoint my my uh, my lips to be able to speak your word Lord anoint the ears of the hearing Lord that they might be able to hear a good and perfect my Lord word that they might be able to apply to their lives fill us with your presence anoint us with your mighty Holy Spirit and help us and strengthen us we pray today in your precious son Jesus name we pray amen amen so today like I said we're going to be talking about daily living in Christ viviendo una vida diaria en Cristo and you know we're coming from the from the book of Romans and Romans of the this is the letter uh, the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome now this is this is a a letter written to mainly to Gentile believers and so uh, although I'm sure that there were um, uh, Jewish believers there as well but but it seems like there there was some kind of a controversy or a strife there between the believers the Gentiles and the and the Jewish believers so Paul sat to write a, a, a letter to the to the Gentile believers. Así es que uh, uh, hoy en esta noche nuestro estudio se viene del de libro de, de Romanos que fue escrito por el apóstol Pablo a los creyentes, a los gentiles eh, eh, de la iglesia en, en Roma. So the letter of, uh, to Romans explains the gospel of justification and salvation of the Jews and Gentiles alike, okay? Así es que la carta de a la, a la iglesia de los romanos eh, explica las buenas nuevas de justificación y salvación uh, para los judíos y los gentiles. So we understand that this salvation is offered not just to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. And the apostle Paul goes on to explain through the through the chapters that you know this salvation this gospel was offered first to the Jews and because the Jews rejected it because of their arrogance because they tried to to find salvation uh, on their on their own through uh, through their own thinking then then it was offered to the Gentiles and we can say praise the Lord for that because the Gentiles um, uh, were were offered salvation as well so what we understand is that you know living a Christian life is is sometimes it's, it's difficult okay Una, la vida cristiana a veces que es difícil. and one of the reasons why sometimes the Christian life is difficult is because we know that this world is not our home sabemos que este mundo no es nuestro hogar okay or it shouldn't be okay I know that we get very attached to this world I know that we get very attached to our to our possessions, to our homes, to our, our vehicles, and uh, those are mine, 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 and things. But you know what? One day when we leave this world, we can't take it with us, not at all. So, so this is what we need to do is learn to live with our future in mind, okay? Así es que lo que, vamos, lo que tenemos que aprender es como cristianos vivir nuestra vida con nuestro futuro en mente siempre. So we understand that God is always at work in this world. Always. The, Jesus told told uh, his disciples, his followers, that he would never leave them. He would never forsake them. And he doesn't. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's always with us. And as a matter of fact, when he left this earth, he left the counselor. He left the Holy Spirit to, to guide us and, and to show us and to be our constant companion. Así es que Cristo Jesús uh, es, dijo siempre que no nos, nunca nos iba a dejar. Que sabemos que Dios siempre está obrando en este mundo. Siempre se está moviendo en maneras 
en, 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 en diferentes maneras en nuestras vidas individuales. We see God always working in our individual lives, coming, trying to bring awareness of our self-righteousness and our dependence on ourselves. What he's trying to do is show us that we can't do it on our own, okay? Lo que, te, lo que, lo que la, las escrituras, lo que Dios trata de enseñarnos es que nosotros no podemos vivir, no podemos uh, sub, uh, subsi, uh, subsist within, uh, within ourselves, okay? So this is what the Apostle Paul was saying. He gives an example of the Jewish nation, and he, he tells us that they could not avail themselves of the righteousness of God because they were so disturb, dis, determined to establish their own righteousness. They couldn't accept that the righteousness comes by faith, okay? Okay, así es que uh, el apóstol Pablo estaba, estaba enseñándonos que, que, uh, que la nación judaica no podía, no podía obtener la justificación de Dios porque, no, uh, porque estaban tan puestos en, en establecer su, su propia justificación. No podían aceptar la justificación que viene solo de, de la fe. So this is something that, it, that's our problem too sometimes. We're so self-sufficient. I know because sometimes that's my problem. I think that I can do it all. I think that I don't need anybody's help until I need someone's help. You know, and then sometimes it's so hard for us to ask for help. But, <clears throat> but we have to understand that we have a Heavenly Father, a, a loving Father that loves us so much that He is willing, He is, he, he is ready to help us in anything and everything that we do. So this is what He, uh, uh, he, he is trying to show, the, the Apostle Paul is trying to explain to us, okay? So we start by reading... Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse, uh, verse, verse 1, it says, Therefore, because God is like this and you are like that, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Or what it means is it makes logical your logical service, okay? Logical service. Okay, so therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. So this is what he is telling them. But as you can see, the beginning of these these uh, these two verses, uh, let's see. And then verse two says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to, te to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So if you look at these two verses from the beginning, you're looking like, hmm, it seems like it's an incomplete, incomplete thought, okay? So, and it is, kind of, okay? Si vemos estos, estos dos versículos, dice, Por lo tanto, hermanos, tomando en cuenta la misericordia de Dios, les ruego que cada uno de ustedes en adoración espiritual ofrezca su cuerpo como sacrificio vivo, santo y agradable a Dios. So we see, parece como que es un, 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 pensamiento, un pensamiento incompleto. So in order to be able to grasp the entire thing, let's go back to chapter 11, the last few verses, verses 33 through 36, because in chapter 11, the apostle Paul starts to to explain about the relationship between God and Israel, but in, and how they were, they, they were uh, uh, rebellious and they were stubborn. But in the beginning of chapter 11, he reminds the people, you know, it's, it's like he's telling, he's telling the Gentiles, don't get so high and mighty, okay? Because sometimes it, that happens to us too, you know? Uh, we, we're believers, we've served the Lord for a long time, and then we see uh, one of our brothers and sisters maybe fall or, or, or black backslide, and then we tend to like, oh my gosh, and they call themselves Christians. Look at that, what happened here, you know? And that we do that sometimes. But, but the Apostle Paul in, in chapter 11 of the, the first few verses, he's telling them, don't worry about that because there is a remnant, there is a remnant of Israel. Okay, so there are, I, 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 un, un, un rem, remamiento de Israel. Así es que, uh, no debemos de, 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 o debemos de tomar en cuenta que aunque, aunque 
a el, la, las buenas nuevas fueron extendidas a nosotros, también son buenas nuevas para el pueblo de Israel. Dios nunca se ha olvidado de su pueblo de Israel. So that's a wonderful thing. And then he's reminding them also that we have been grafted in. We are grafted in branches. So that's another reason why we shouldn't act like we're the only ones. Like we're, you know, we're so high and mighty, okay? Así es que no, no debemos de olvidarnos que somos ram, uh, ramas inger, injertadas. Así es que... Uh, uh, no debemos de, de olvidarnos del pueblo de Israel. So then we see that that the word of God says tells us that that Israel will be saved. Okay, Israel will be saved. But yet also God has extended this love and grace and mercy to the Gentiles. And then He's telling them why? Can you understand this? Why is He doing this? So in verses 33 through 36. He explains it. It says, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of God or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. He said, ¿Qué profundas son las riquezas de la sabiduría y del conocimiento de Dios? ¿Qué indiscutibles sus juicios? ¿Qué impenetrables sus caminos? ¿Quién ha conocido la mente del Señor? ¿O quién ha sido su consejero? Sí, so a lot of times we don't understand the love and the grace. We don't understand the measure of God's love and grace and mercy. And who are we to question it? Why does God love him? Why does God love her? Or does God love him or her more than he loves us? You know, and, and the apostle Paul says, oh, the depth, the depth and the riches. See, we don't understand that a lot of times. We don't understand the depth of God's love. We don't understand the depth of his wisdom you know there was one wise man that had the same the same thought job remember job he had the same problem he questioned god he wanted to know lord i've done all this i've been a righteous man i've served you god why do you do this why do you do that and god says okay when were you born where were you when i created all creation when I hung every star in the sky, when I created the planets, when I created the the, uh, the the sea creatures of the deep, and where were you? See? So he's asking this, and a lot of times, it, it, when we understand the greatness of God, it makes us realize how little we really are, and how much God's grace are, uh, ext is extended to us, his love, even though... We are but nothing in, in him. So this is what this is what he's saying. But a lot of times, see, man has a problem. We have a problem. And in when I say man, I mean mankind. That includes women too, because women can be very stubborn too, right, Deborah? No, no. <laughs> we can't. See, what is it that keeps an individual or an, an, an or a nation from receiving mercy uh, from God? Well, you know what it is? It's always a self-righteous or a self-confident attitude. I don't need help. I can navigate life without God. And that gets us into trouble. Okay? De, muchas veces lo que, nos, lo que nos, no nos ayuda es que, es que creemos que somos, uh, que somos, que nos podemos justificar nosotros mismos y que no necesitamos ayuda. No necesitamos a Dios. And that's so totally wrong, right? And you know what? Don't don't worry. Don't, those are unbelievers. But you know what? The believer has the same problem too, because you know what we try to do? We try to to uh, over analyze. We try to analyze or in, in, understand God or understand intellectually all the doctrines of the scriptures. Because what we want to do is put God into a little box where we can uh, get a hold of him and analyze him. We want to know God. And you say, oh, I want to know God in the fullness of his love, the fullness of his grace. But the idea is that we want to know 
how we can, a lot of times, even without saying it, how we can manipulate him. We, we try to put God in our own little box and pull him out only when we need him, only when we want to. But we don't realize that if we would even succeed in doing that, you know what we would do? We would do, we, we would put God or we would reduce God to the same size as man. What good is man? See? So, so we can't, we can't do that. He is beyond that. So that's what we need to understand. And sometimes our finite mind, our limited mind cannot comprehend the greatness of God, the goodness of God, and 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 the, the depth of his riches, the depth of, of his love. And a lot of times, that's why we're always surprised when God does some of the things that he does. And we're wondering, oh, wow. You know, I, sometimes I say, I'm not surprised, but I'm amazed. Because, you know, every single time God does something in my favor, I'm amazed for what he has done. And so... This is what the Apostle Paul is trying to say in the last few verses of chapter 11. Truthfully, those last three verses in chapter 11 should actually belong to chapter 12 because what he's saying is he's, he explained all of this. God is great. God is awesome. God is merciful. Therefore, okay, that's what he's saying. Therefore, okay. Dios es grande. Dios es misericordioso. Dios es poderoso. Por lo tanto, okay, because of all that, then we should, we should, uh, uh, he says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Now, like I said, sometimes it's very hard to serve God. We offer him our, our souls when we accept the Lord as our, as our Savior. We offer him our souls and our spirits. And, um, and that's great. And that's awesome. That's wonderful. Cuando aceptamos a Cristo Jesús como nuestro Salvador, le, le, le ofrecemos a uh, nuestro espíritu y, uh, y, y, y todo. Pero saben que? Sometimes it's like we're living double lives. Because although we offer him <clears throat> our souls and our spirits and we go to church and we praise the Lord and we, uh, and we lift up our hands and we sing all the, you know, we know all the right songs. We know all the, the right prayers. We know all the right words. We know all the right scriptures. We've learned them by, by heart. We know them. We know them. We can, if somebody even says a few words, you know, like me, you know, when I was growing up, it's like, oh, okay. So I would just finish off the, the scripture for the preacher because I know it already. I've been in this, you know, I've been in church for so many years. I already know all those scriptures. I know them. But what I didn't know was the grace of God because I hadn't experienced, fully experienced his love and his grace. So this is what he's saying. So God, here, the apostle Paul is saying, it's not just good enough for you to offer him his your soul and your spirit. Now what you have to do is offer him your body. And some of you might be thinking, especially women, we have a problem with our bodies, right? We look at our bodies and we're so critical. Well, maybe some men too. I don't know. But women more are, are more critical about their bodies than men are. We're always looking where, you know, our hair's too short, our hair's too long, we're too chubby, we're too skinny, our faces, our noses are too long, our, our height, our cheekbones are too high. Or, ¿Cuánta cosa? Tenemos todo el tiempo, especialmente las mujeres, tenemos siempre problema con nuestros cuerpos, ¿verdad? Somos tan críticos de nuestros cuerpos físicos. So there's always an issue with our, with our, 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 our bodies. <clears throat> so why does God want our bodies? He's saying to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. So God is telling, bring your bodies. Okay. Bring your bodies. We've already surrendered our spirits. We've already surrendered our souls. But like I said, sometimes we live double lives because you know what? This body is what gets us into trouble. It's what gets us into trouble. Este cuerpo físico, this body, you know, the Apostle Paul spoke of it in of this body in, in another part of the epistles. And he, he talked about how, you know, this body is made of flesh. And it's the flesh that gets us into trouble. It's the flesh that feels, you know. And, and if we're the type of person that we're feely, touchy feelies, you know, everything affects us. And, you know, we're going to be in trouble all the time. And we're going to have, we're just going to have problems. So, <clears throat> So the Apostle Paul, and even this scripture, let me tell you, 
even this scripture, I know that there's a lot of Christians that know this scripture by heart. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourself as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. We all know that scripture, but do we know what it means? So Paul is telling Paul is telling the believer that God is interested in your body, in your flesh. The flesh that makes you, that gets you into trouble all the time, that's the one he's interested in. Yo se entera, se entera en su cuerpo también. Ese cuerpo, esta carne que siempre nos, 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 nos mete en problemas, Dios está enterado en ese cuerpo. So here's the thing. This verse, this this particular word that the Apostle Paul uses, uh, um, present your bodies. The Greek, the Greek word, uh, it really means it means that it's something that you do once and for all. You don't have to continue doing it over and over. Although sometimes, because you know, <clears throat> let, let's put it this way. I don't know if you've ever seen. There's only been one resurrected body so so far. We can't sacrifice another dead body. The only one that resurrected was Christ. And until Christ comes again for his church, we're not going to be resurrected yet. So what he's telling us is that we have to offer this body as a living sacrifice. And we can't bring it back to life. That old body, we can't bring it back to life. We got to leave it on the altar. You know, there's times where we we do that and, and, and we think that we're doing good. And then the Holy Spirit says, oh, I see that sacrifice getting up off the altar. Mm, what happened there? Okay. A veces que, que dejamos nuestro, nuestro cuerpo en, en el altar como sacrificio, pero el Espíritu Santo nos dice, ah, ahí viene ese sacrificio, se, se levantó del altar. Ya se levantó. And, you know, and we all have that problem. And, you know, and we think, well, God, you're God, you're great, you're merciful. Couldn't you do something about it? You say, you say that you love us. Why don't you do something once and for all? <clears throat> well, let's look at it. We love our children. We love them so much that as, uh, as mothers, you know, we sometimes we move mountains to get them what they need, what they want. We move mountains, I know. Sometimes, I mean, we, they need something, we'll find the money, we'll find whatever it is that they need. We will find it and we will, we will help them out. And, and that is what God does. But, you know, sometimes mothers, your children get into trouble and we go out there and, and, you know, see here, this is, this is what we need to understand. The problem is not the judge that issued the judgment. The problem is not the police officer that caught your beloved child. The problem is not the lawyer that didn't defend him properly. The problem was not his friends that didn't love him enough and keep him into trouble. The problem is his attitude, his nature. And that is a problem with us as well. The problem is not that God doesn't love us. The problem is not that God didn't do enough. The problem is not that Jesus didn't shed enough blood on the cross for our sins. The problem is our human nature. The problem is that we haven't changed. There hasn't been a renewing of our minds. There haven't, hasn't been a, 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 a change in our spirits. That's why, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, told us in, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he reminds us, therefore, you know, we are, uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He's trying to remind you, okay? If anyone is in Christ, he, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new is here, okay? That is, this is what he's saying, or this is what should happen. You know, this is what should happen. Si alguno está en Cristo, nueva criatura es. Las cosas viejas pasaron, y aquí todas son hechas nuevas. Y eso es como nos amonesta el apóstol Pablo en, en 2 de Corintios, capítulo 5, versículo 17. Pero hasta que venga a nacer esa nueva naturaleza en nosotros, no puede haber un cambio. And it doesn't matter how many times we rescue our children. It doesn't how many times people rescue us from our bad attitudes, from our bad choices, from our wrong decisions. 
it's never going to be enough because we haven't had a renewing of our minds and a, re a restoration of our souls, of our bodies. We haven't offered unto God our bodies as a living sacrifice. So this is, this is the problem right here. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul is saying that the body is the seed of what he calls the flesh. So we have a problem with our flesh, okay? Este cuerpo. You know, sometimes not only is it spiritually bad, you know, physically it does. Sometimes it smells, sometimes it just doesn't look right, you know? Um, but we're not going to go there. So, but God is saying that he wants our body as a living sacrifice. And, and we ask the Lord, Lord, why do you want our bodies? Why do you want him? And God is telling us that he wants our body, soul, and spirit. Jesus said that, that, that you should love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Everything, everything that we are, everything that we could be, ¿verdad? Debemos llamar a Dios con, con, uh, con todo lo que hacemos, con, con, uh, um, con todo nuestro corazón, con todo nuestro ser, con toda nuestra mente, con todo eso debemos llamar al Señor. And he's telling us that it's through, because of his shed blood and the work of the Holy Spirit, that he is the one that is making this body, this wretched body that is no good on its own, he's making it holy and pleasing unto God. That's what he's doing. And that's why in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the, the Lord tells us to come to him. It says, come unto me, all you who are weary and are burdened. You know, because sometimes this flesh is burdensome. It's burdensome. It, it gets tiring trying to fix it up, trying to make it look good, trying to, you know, trying to make it presentable. It gets tiring. And sometimes we just don't, we just don't succeed. We have problems with it. And we, we have problems, we have temptations, but you know what? That's what God is telling us to bring to him. Todos estos problemas en nuestro, en nuestro, eh, en nuestra carne, Todas, todas esas tentaciones es lo que Dios quiere que le traigamos a Él, que los déjenos al, a, 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 a Él en la cruz, ¿verdad? He, God wants us to lay all those problems, all those temptations at the foot of the cross because that is where all the price, the entire price has been paid. So, so the Apostle Paul tells us, because you know all this, el apóstol Pablo nos está diciendo, porque sabiendo todo esto, entonces debe de ser entonces su adoración, su adoración lógica. This should be your logical worth worship. Because you know you're unworthy, because you know that you're needy, because you know that you can't do it on your own, because you know that we serve a mighty God, because you know that he is a, a loving God, a God that is always there, then Therefore, this should be your logical worship. So, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times we think that the worship we just do at church. You know, and, and I was so happy when, when uh, Deborah and Jacob came in earlier and Deborah says, put on some worship music. And so we were praising the Lord, you know, because worship should be all the time. All the time, every daily waking moment of our lives should be a, 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 an attitude of worship because we understand how unworthy we are of God's love and God's grace. And we should look for reasons and, and moments to worship the Lord. Porque sabemos y entendemos que como que tanto que necesitamos a Dios y como Dios nos ama tanto aunque no lo merecemos entonces eso debía de, 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 de ayudarnos a poder alabar y adorar al Señor so our worship should not just be although we worship God at, at church we should we worship him corporately but we should also worship him daily individually in everything that we do because we understand that he is he is worthy. And you know what? Our bodies, our spirit depends on that worship. You Are you having problems serving God? Or do you feel kind of weak in your spiritual life? We'll begin praising the Lord. Okay? ¿Tienes, tienes problemas a, 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 alabando a Dios? ¿Tienes problemas en tu, en tu servicio a Dios? 
Empieza a adorar al Señor. Empieza a realizar que es un Dios grande y poderoso que te ama aún aunque no lo mereces. ¿Verdad? So God is so good. This is who he is. So in and of ourselves, what do we do with our bodies? Well, we misuse it. We abuse it. We use it for things that the body wasn't even intended for sometimes. What can I say? A veces que este cuerpo... Lo, lo, lo usamos mal, lo abusamos y lo usamos, usamos este cuerpo para, para cosas que, que este cuerpo no fue, no fue hecho para, 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 para ser usado, ¿verdad? And sometimes we put things into our bodies that destroy it or hurt it. A veces que ponemos en este cuerpo cosas que, que destruyen este cuerpo o, o hieren este cuerpo. So what do we do? We can either ruin this, this body. Or we can spend a lot of time preserving it and painting it and, and putting lotions on it and trying to pamper it and see, you know. But that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to offer our bodies to him just the way it is. You know, sometimes people get a misconception and say, we say, the, you know, the, uh, God says, come as you are. And they think that it's, you know, it's what you're wearing, you know, your, your outer appearance, but it's not. It's not. It's our inner spirit. Come as you are. You're weary. You're heavy laden. You have struggles in your life. Come to the Lord because he's the only one that can help you. Okay? A veces que tenemos un mal entendimiento de esa frase que dice, ven como estás. Y creemos que eso quiere decir que vemos como, como, como nos vistemos, pero no. Lo que quiere decir es, ven como estás espiritualmente. ¿Estás decaído? ¿Estás débil espiritualmente? ¿Tienes de, 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 ¿Te falta algo? Entonces es lo que debemos de, tener, de traer a, a nuestro Padre Celestial. So it says that, therefore, the only logical and sensible thing to do with our bodies is to bring it to the Lord. Say, Lord, here it is. Here it is. I just don't know what to do with it anymore. I've tried and tried on my own and it always gets me into trouble. Always. I think I'm doing the right thing. I think I'm going the right way. And all of a sudden it all ends in nothing. It all ends in disappointment. Why? Because we're trying to satisfy the wrong need. The wrong need. Estamos tratando de satisfacer una necesidad Errónea, ¿ok? Porque no, no necesitamos satisfacer este cuerpo físico, sino que lo que necesitamos satisfacer es nuestro espíritu, ¿ok? We need to satisfy our, our spiritual well-being, our, our spirit, and not our physical body. So then the Apostle Paul says, ok, so what is it that you need to keep on doing? First of all, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Literally, it means the schemes of this world. What does the world try to do? See, we can't live by the world's uh, by the world anymore. We were from the world, and now we're not part of it. We always sing that song: "This world is not my home. I'm I'm only passing through." But yet, we hang on to so many things, or that. Así es que no debemos de 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 con mantenernos con eh, con el, con el el patrón de de esta de de esta de este mundo, okay? Porque este mundo, and you know, a lot of times we think, oh, it's, it's talking about no smoking, no drinking, no, no going to bars, no going to this, no going to that. Okay, although you shouldn't do those things, but it's, that's not just, that's not all of it, okay? That's not all of it. So what does that mean? So it means the spirit of the age. What is it? What is the whole philosophy of this age, of this world nowadays? You know what it is? What's in it for me? What do I get out of it? I work, I, you know, to work, to work I go. So what is, what's the song? What's the song that the seven dwarves say? To Off to work I go? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but because we want to make a better life for ourselves and we want to advance ourselves. And, you know, so, so this is what we do. What do I get out of it? What's in it for me? And that's the spirit of this age. What's in it for me? What's, the, what's my angle? How can I work this for my benefit? For my benefit. And unless it's, uh, if there's nothing in it for me, then I'm not interested. Okay? Así es que el, 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 la filosofía de este mundo es, ¿qué, qué, ¿qué hay en eso para mí? ¿Cómo voy a beneficiar yo? ¿Hay algo para mí? Si no hay algo para mí, entonces yo no estoy interesado. And see, that's the thing that, that, that the apostle says 
that don't do that. Don't let the world around you pressure you into living and talking the way they do. Don't do that. So how do we wait, avoid conforming? Okay. Here's the second thing that we need to do then in order to avoid confirming. It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay. So there's no way that we can be, that we can keep from being transformed to the world on your, unless you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, um, mothers and fathers, like I said before, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on your children, how much you try to get them out of trouble, what you do, and, or anything like that. It's not until God transformed their minds that there will be a change, okay? And we can't blame anybody else. We cannot blame anybody else. See, sometimes we tend to blame the devil for so many things when actually it's me. A veces que, 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 que decimos que fue el diablo, el diablo que nos hizo hacer esto. I, I think we spoke about it a, a few weeks ago about blaming the devil for so many things. But a lot of times it's just us. It's just our flesh getting us into trouble and we don't, but we just want to blame someone else. You no, know, there's so many people in prisons right now, angry people in prisons because their parents didn't do enough. Where actually, you know what? It was them. They could have made a decision to change their lives, to, to accept the Lord. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 talks about having the mind of Christ. So our whole attitude, our whole way of thinking has to change. So what does that mean, having the mind of Christ? ¿Qué quiere decir tener la mente de Dios, de Cristo? Okay, so having the mind of Christ is a way of looking at life as Jesus does. Okay, seeing life as he sees it. It's, it's, it's seeing what is really there and not what seems to be there. Because you know what? Our physical eyes, we see just what's here. Just what's here in front of us. But our spiritual eyes can see so much way beyond and that's what the word of God is trying to tell us train your mind to be able to see what God sees what Jesus says. that's what it is that we need to do the mind of Christ sees that the goal of living is not to please yourself but to please God okay la teniendo la, la, la mente de Cristo entonces la meta es en vivir no para satisfacernos nosotros sino que para siempre a agradar a Dios eso es lo que debemos de hacer so we please God when we depend on him when we call out to him and everything that we do that's how we that's how we please God and we in in pleasing God he gives us more power he gives us more wisdom he gives us more strength and somehow in situations that you find yourselves did you know that sometimes the Holy Spirit shows us ways where he gets us out of those things because we have the mind of God. We think differently now. We don't think the way that we that we do. So how do we renew our mind? ¿Cómo podemos renovar esta mente? Well, first of all, we get deeper into this word of God. This, you know, I always tell people, this word, this book right here, is a treasure box it's a treasure box it's full of treasures and all these treasures are just for me okay i'll share them with you if you look for them yourself <laughs> i'll tell you where to look for them okay but you have to look for them as well you have to find them este libro es un es un, es, es un libro de tantas uh, uh, cosas preciosas verdad tesoros preciosos que Dios tiene para nosotros, pero tenemos que escudriñar las, las escrituras, ¿verdad? Be like the Bereans, that they were ser constantly searching the scriptures, trying to find what it was that God wanted from, uh, from them and, and for them. So when you're confused and don't know what, uh, where you are, you need to renew your mind by reading the word of God, ¿okay? Cuando estamos confundidos y no sabemos a dónde ir, entonces podemos Podemos uh, satisfacernos o podemos renovar esta mente para buscar, uh, por medio de buscar en la palabra de Dios. Siempre, always, reading the word of God, thinking it through, and letting that word speak to your heart, always. And then you go back to your, to your routine and determine that your life will then be in line with the word of God. We don't live according to the world anymore, but we live according to the word of God.
So if we're willing to bring our bodies to God and we say, Lord, here it is. I have trouble with it. I, I'm always getting into trouble by myself. Si, si podemos traer nuestros, nuestros cuerpos a Dios y decirle, aquí está, aquí está mi sacrificio. Aquí está, Señor, haz algo con él. Yo siempre tengo problemas, pero aquí está. You want it? Here it is. Here it is. Let it be an instrument for whatever it is that you want of me, Lord. Let it be an instrument. And you know what? God takes it. He restores it. He renews it. And he repurposes it too. You're not doing, you're not worth the same thing anymore. You're more valuable. More valuable than what you were before because God has repurposed you. Yes, you still do the same things. You still do the same jobs. You still have the same jobs. You still live in the same place. But God has repurposed your life. Okay. So then the word of God says the last few, uh, that, that last verse says, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will for you. These are two commands, uh, com uh, commands that are in the present tense. We're constantly, we're able in everything that we do in our daily walk with the Lord, we are able to put this, uh, these two commands into practice in our lives. That means that they are things that you keep on doing in everything that you're doing. You're, you're testing and you're, and you're, you're, and you're approving what God's will is for your life. That's what it is. So today, beloved, I, I, I'm asking you, I, I'm begging you to present your lives as a living sacrifice unto God. Are you tired of living the way you are? Are you tired of struggling? Are you try, uh, tired of always finding those bumps in the road? Are you tired? Well, you don't have to live that way anymore. You don't have to live defeated Christian lives. What we have to do is offer our lives as a living sacrificing unto him and not be conformed to this world. Yes, things are still going to happen. Yes, people are still going to call us names and things. Yes, people are still going to kick us around. But you know what? We have the mind of Christ. We're going to see beyond those things and see that God has a reason and a purpose, even for those things in our lives. He has a reason and a purpose, you know. The, the word of God says that he knows the plans that he has for you and they're all perfect. Although we don't see that right now. Sometimes we don't see that, but those are all perfect for us. So what we need to do is ask the Lord, Lord, transform me by renewing my mind. And so that I can prove what your will for is for me is what's acceptable and perfect and well. Okay. So this is what we need to pray, beloved. Just say, Lord, here I am. I offer you my heart. I've offered you my soul. And now I'm offering you my body. This flesh that gets me into trouble, Lord. Take it. Do something with it. Renew my mind. Restore me, my Lord. Repurpose my life in Jesus' name. If you'd like to do this, just pray and ask the Lord. He is so good. He's so merciful. He's waiting. He's accepting. He's, he's promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. He's always there until your last dying moment. But why would you have to wait until your last dying moment to render your entire life to him? You don't have to. You don't have to. Today is a day of salvation. Even for those of us that already know the Lord. Today is the day of complete and full salvation where God can renew us and renew our minds. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, please join me as we worship the Lord because indeed he's done the great and mighty thing in our lives and he deserves all the love, all the mercy, and all the worship. Amen. <clears throat>
praise the Lord. Indeed, God is awesome. He's so wonderful. He's so merciful. He loves us so much. Um, please join us if you're able to on Sunday for Sunday school at 930 in the morning there at church at 347 uh, Hermitage East Hermitage Court. Uh, 930 in the morning for Sunday school and then at 11 in the morning for praise and worship. So praise the Lord. Continue praying for those that that, that need uh, need prayer and continue calling each other and encouraging each other and just praying for each other and and just being that you know that voice of encouragement to to people that need to hear a good word. So praise the Lord. Thank you so much once again for joining us and we hope to see you on Sunday uh, for uh, for for service. So let us pray, dear Heavenly Father, once again, my Lord. We just thank you for your presence. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit minister to my brothers and sisters, wherever they might be, Lord. Fill them with your presence. Help them, Lord Jesus, to be able to, to know you in the fullness of your love, your grace, and your mercy. That all of us be able to offer ourselves as living sacrifices unto you so that we might go forth and perform the good work, a good work that you have, that you have called us to be, my Lord. In your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. See you soon.